Hello on my engineering channel. Here we have a video called Why do wind turbines have three blades? Um, from Minute Physics. This is, in my opinion, clearly not wrong, but extremely misleading. And to, to avoid misunderstandings, please take care. I'll tell you the points where you should uh, pay attention, where this is completely misleading, this video. And now let's start. I will um, close. Uh, my face is not needed. I was rollerblade developer for about 15 years. Now let's start. It's possible to build a wind turbine with two blades, or five blades, or even one blade. But the vast majority of modern windmills have three blades. One blade is uh, monopterus called. Two blades was a German Grovian. Groß Windanlage, big wind machine. An abbreviation, but it's correct. Most have three blades. So it seems Vestas, and now let's go on. And there are three good reasons for that. More. The first reason for three blades comes from physics. All else being equal, the more blades a windmill has, the more torque it can generate, but also the more drag it has, because each additional blade has to cut through the wind. And drag grows quickly the faster the windmill is spinning. Okay, so this is, uh, let's say, a little bit misleading, because he puts the same blade to the wind turbine. This is the same blade and with the same cord and so on and so forth. You have to take care in the complete video. He always uses the same blade, but not the same solidity. And this is the key point. What he is saying is always valid for the same blade. And if you put more blades on a hub, then you get well, for sure more drag and at the optimum tip speed ratio TSR called here lambda in, later on in, in this diagram is, is dropping and with lower rotating blades you have more induced drag. So induced drag is a drag from the tips at airplanes and the same air at wind turbines you have the same drag at the hub that you get a swirl from the tips. That is the induced drag, which is not um, coming from, from, um, from, from, from uh, yeah, but which is, you have also in inviscid flow, you get this drag, you are make, you are crea creating permanent, permanently, you create swirls or vortices. That's the point, and the more blades you have, the slower is your rotor, the slower is your optimum tip speed ratio of the rotor and the more induced drag you get because a slow running rotor means high drag. So in general, many bladed windmills work better at lower rotational speeds relative to wind speed. On the other hand, a windmill with fewer blades generates less torque, but also experiences less drag. So fewer bladed windmills tend to work better at higher rotational speeds. Here's a graph showing the efficiencies of turbines with different numbers of blades, where the x-axis shows how fast they're spinning relative to the wind, TSR. and the y-axis shows the efficiency of the turbine. The efficiency for a five-blade turbine is highest at low speeds, while a one-blade turbine works better at high rotational speeds. You can see that the highest possible efficiency of any turbine comes at intermediate speeds on this. Okay, and in my opinion, this is completely misleading. This is the misleading point because this is misleading because you, in my opinion, this diagram is created with the same blades. He is ca simply calculating. I have one blade and one, three, four, five blades, and then you optimize your tip speed ratio for this rotor with five blades is drastically slower than your than with one blade but for this blade for this machine which has most probably designed for three blades this has with three blades also the optimum cp the optimum efficiency and this is crucial take care this is always written down for the same blade and this is that is that was I want to correct. This is completely misleading what he says. We have two options, or there are two options to calculate this, and he should do it in a second video. 
and to have the same solidity. Let's say at one, if you have a two-bladed rotor, um, uh, let's say a three-bladed rotor with a cord at one pace of two meters, then you could have a two-bladed rotor with three meters. That should be, and you have the same shapes, the same twist, and so on. These blades are always the same. Uh, have always you have, then you have the same solidity, but the two-blader becomes wrong because more blades are better. Okay, let's continue. This curve here, which corresponds to, you guessed it, three blades. But there's more to a turbine than efficiency. A super high efficiency windmill is no use if it falls apart after just a little while. Yeah. So the second no. reason why windmills have three blades comes from engineering. The problem is that windmills have to be strong enough to withstand the many different bending and rotational and vibrational forces necessary for their operation. For example, when the blades of a two-blade wind turbine are aligned with or opposite the pole, it can create an unbalanced twisting force under the wrong wind conditions. Yeah, this can lead correct. to large forces pushing the pole to bend forwards or backwards or twist side to side. There are similar issues with other even numbers of blades, including for our purposes a single blade rotor since it only has a counterweight on the other side and nothing to balance the unequal wind forces. If the rotor has an odd number of blades, like three or five, the fact that blades don't come in pairs means that wind loads are more evenly distributed across the face of the rotor, and so the yeah, bending okay, and twisting forces that's are greatly correct, reduced. Fully correct, so, yes. in order to use two blades, the materials and engineering of the tower, hub, and blades need to be more robust, which costs more and negates many of the other cost benefits of using fewer blades. And this is, in my opinion, not fully correct. Uh, that is, you can run these blades faster, and this is this is too simple. What he says, that the engineering costs increase drastically. That is not what you need. Is a larger bearing, and for offshore, in my opinion, two blader because you simply need a more robust bearing, but the blades can run faster. And this is the point, I don't believe these numbers. Also, when comparing three and five blade designs with the two blade design, the lower rotational speeds of turbines with more blades means that all the moving parts experience less wear over time. So to minimize unwanted twisting forces from the wind, we want an odd number of blades. And more blades cause less wear and tear, but more blades cost more money. If you took the blades from two five blade turbines, you'd have enough to make three three blade turbines plus one left over. Taking all these engineering factors into account, three blades it is. The third reason for windmills to have three blades comes from human comfort. Yeah, if you correct. want to build a windmill, you need people to be okay with you building a windmill. So how it looks and how it sounds matters. Three blade rotors are generally considered more visually pleasing than a two blade equivalent. One correct. possible reason for this is that the space taken up by a three blade rotor in the horizontal and vertical directions changes only slightly over time, whereas a two blade rotor switches back and forth and back and forth between mostly horizontal and mostly vertical and generally looks more choppy. Even at rest, people prefer the symmetry of three blades over two. Three look pretty good, while two can look off balance or awkward depending on how they're oriented relative to the yes, tower. Correct. Wind turbines are also noisy, and basically all of the noise comes from the turbulence that forms as the blades cut through the air. So the least noisy windmills are the slowest. Looking again at the efficiency graph, we see that a three blade rotor achieves the same or better level of efficiency. I don't believe that because what I told you, this, these blades are optimized for a three bladed rotor and therefore the three blader is the best at slower rotational speed than a two-blade rotor, which means for a given wind speed, three-blade windmills can run more quietly, though they are by no means silent. Obviously, we've glossed over some details, but essentially that's it. Three good reasons that windmills have three blades. Physics says that three-blade rotors are most efficient. Engineering says that for the same cost, three-blade rotors are less likely to break than two-blade ones. And human comfort says they're not noisy, headless stick figures. So, and this is... And this is, a, and now I'll explain you the facts, because this is not the truth that three blader, three bladers are the most efficient. Uh, but first of all, take into account that rotor blades have to be be able to transport it, and in Germany is a maximum of hay of four meters, four by two point five meters, and therefore. The most blades fit best into this box. That's the point. Otherwise, you get problems to get through the tunnel or so on. And therefore, if you have, usually, if you have a two blader, you need broader blades, two wider blades with a higher cord at max cord. And there, and there, then you get problems 
with transport and therefore usually three bladers are used in the standard dimensions of machines. What's going on with a machine with 250 meter diameter? I don't know. Uh, but now I will explain you what's, what is, is misleading here in this contribution and the point what, what the most efficient. Now it's a little bit theoretical. Um, if I fix solidity and I have the same let's say it's the same blade shape, but sm and I, I make a variation what I told already. I have at, uh, three blades at one position with one two meter cord or two blades with three meter cord. These machines have the same solidity. And if you calculate this, um, this stuff with a solidity, then you will find out that an infinite number of blades will be the optimum. That is crazy. You will have an infinite number of blades with close, in fact, close to zero multiplication with infinite by something minus infinite getting the same solidity. This is because of the induced track. Because then in this case you have, okay, let's have you, let's say you have Bats theory and it calculates the disk. It doesn't calculate any induced track. Bats says we have a CP of 0.59 for the through flow of disk and this comes close to this ideal manner and then theoretically if you don't have friction track your rotor will have a CP of 0.59. This is not and this is clearly clearly not possible. Why? Because if you have a if you have a, a blade with a 50 meter length and is, which is, has a width a cord of one or two centimeters, it's a strip, then it will be as flexible and so on. It's not manufacturable. And therefore, we need uh, a good number of blades and the effect that a low number of blades is dropping the UCP. This was correct in this diagram. Then you with a one blader and so on UCP is a real bad. Two blader is also not bad and three blader is much better and four blader would be better if you make more slender blades. But this uh, the, the, the delta is so low, it becomes so low and goes very slow to the 0.59 with more blades, then uh, that, that it makes no sense to put onto this machine more blades. And this is the reason why machines have three blades. This is some engineering compromise. That's the point. And okay. That's, that's, that's it. What I told and manufacturing is correct. And this, that's a two blader is, well, that is all or not everything. Okay. But this video was, in my opinion, crucial misleading. And please try to calculate the same thing for a constant solidity with one blade, two blade, 20 blades. And you will see that. Okay, but with the small blades, it will also become a problem with the Reynolds number of the, with the cord of the. Okay, that is a secondary effect. Okay, of real friction. I'm a dynamicist. I, I really know. But um, if you calculate this, you get completely different um, answers. And what the final? What? Okay, and the lower the solidity, and the faster a blade is running with a higher uh, tip speed ratio, lambda TSR, then the higher the efficiency is because, um, because the induced drag is dropping. That's the next point. More slender blades, you can run faster and then your CP will be better. And therefore, if you have slender blades, which you put into into a, a field where the average wind 
speed is low, then you can you build slender blades for low wind regions, and these blades are slen more slender, and these blades become more efficient than blades standing directly at the water where you have an average of 10 meters wind. That are these things. Maybe you can also contact me, the Engineers Canal, the Engineering Channel. Thank you for hearing and uh, please be a little bit tolerant for my English. I haven't spoken for a long time, not any longer English language. Thank you for hearing my channel. Any questions, please ask. I'm open. I'm out of business since 15 years.